made. Let's check this out. Well, I need it. Okay, okay. Uh, it's good. It's definitely better. I think we can push it. It's basically you do the same thing again. It sounds horrible. <laughs> do it again. It's like a drill sergeant. Do it again. Um, basically. <clears throat> so the couple of things here, just from a technical point of view, it still feels a bit stiff. There's a good rounding here in the body, but just there's, I know it's very beginning, but <clears throat> it feels just a bit stiff coming in. Also with the tail up like that, even though tails are not technically extremely drag overlappy, something with a curved thing coming up here and then getting into this into reverse would be good. <clears throat> the head kind of pops over one frame down and boom, <clears throat> one frame up. You can lead this with stay low and then here, it's kind of tricky, you would have to almost go down with the head first. And then on this frame, you would uh, rotate the head up so you, then the, the, sh the snout goes up first to lead, you know what I mean? Like you want to be in this position before this goes up. Then this is all great. I would just slow it down again. 50, 20, 15, 20%. I'll push it just to see then you can always speed it up. You can do like a you can do like a rough key scale. Forget about paw placement and messiness, and you can always send me that if you want for a quick just timing look. A lot of times I just take this and I you know at work I just I just scale the keys. Like does that general timing feel right and I and I I kinda squint and I ignore all the crappiness that will happen when you when you scale things. Um, I'm I'm just kinda looking at like general body parts, how they feel. Right now, let's go back here. Comes here. I feel it, but you can just push it a bit more, especially through here. And then you want to feel that push off more. And then watch out what you're doing also arc-wise. Your legs, especially here, look at that. You get a little bit of a strobing here. So you got one leg paw here. Boom, on the next frame, the same position, which, which creates strobing, right? So you want to be... I will be, I don't know if you can be lower, but you know, I will bring that potentially lower and then bring down those paws. And then at this point, this might be here, paw lower, and this guy might be here, paw a bit lower. So, it, so there's no strobing, you can see in my red drawings. And then as you get into here, you might be here, and then this guy might still be low, right? Because we're low, then you stretch out, really stretch out. But I will probably actually this is probably wrong here. Can I undo my link? Yes, I can. I'll go a bit higher, and then yet higher, and I, he will probably have to land more. So basically, what I'm trying to say is, so watch out your your spacing, um, watch out for strobing, but watch out. This is also all in a straight line. So if I go back here, see that those paws are in a straight line. You want to do something where whew, this is exaggerated, but it might be this, or they might just be like that, or they might be like that. But there's something about these guys being straight, and then look at this, boom, suddenly down. And you want something where it feels like they're they're reaching forward, basically. And that's why I think, again, with the slight pause and then explosiveness of this. See, this is also funky. If you look at his ass, and this sounds weird, but look at his ass here 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 look at that it's always kind of the same thing put all the onions getting back so you you pop from here here and then you then you're stuck and then you suddenly pop over here oh and then you slow down a lot see that that's your spacing you go pop and then hold pop again and you want to make sure that um that your spacing goes from something a bit smaller to pop get out of there and then boom this might slow down a lot through here because legs are touching and it's compressing like that. I can buy that. But even then, it would probably be the chest spacing be big and then suddenly slow down a lot while the uh, pelvis will slow down a lot less. Because that's your first thing that touches the ground and then that comes in later, if that makes sense. See that? So your spacing will stop more here, but this will continue because the momentum has to carry over. Boom, and only now will it slow down. 
So again, you might end up with the head here. You know, in the worst case, you know, you just take this cube and extend it and bring this cube over here, right? Um, so you can basically do, keep your animation, adjust the leg on him, but you can take the overall controller that moves the whole rig and do a little bit of a cheat on a different node or anim layer to move the dog much further, but you don't have to change any of your animation. So then he just lands globally here, and then you continue with the same animation. And because you shifted the cube edge around, you can preserve all that animation, basically. That makes sense. And this still feels um, very stiff here. You got this line, and you got this line. I don't see any breakup in the chest or head. There's no lead in or anything as he goes around. So I would still watch out for that. So even this here, you want to be careful when you do reversals, when you have, that's your axis orientation of the head. And it goes down a bit, which is cool for a drag, but look at this, it's mainly the same. So if he goes down, you can have a bit more of a drag, boom, impact, maybe more of a drag, you know, like just something like that, or you, you say fuck that and then do the opposite where now you go up and he leads with the head up. You know what I mean? Where it's always kind of like that leading. So that could also be a way. It's just different, different acting ways. And then don't forget, this feels a bit poppy. So as you go up, again, tails are usually doing all kinds of crazy stuff, but you could still do a bit more of a drag. And then only by now you do your drag here. So there's a bit more of a, a whippy overlap versus what you have here. Alrighty. And then you're thinking about um, putting the dog in a lava world. You could. Um, you could. <laughs> what I would do then, and it's a bit tricky with the angle. It's a bit tricky. When I see the, the lava world, I'm thinking, you know, I will probably move this over here. That's your framing, right? I'm lose my lose my overall drawing tool. So this would be, whoa, what happened here? Hold on, I just moved everything over for myself. So this is your framing up to here, right? So imagine dog comes up and you got your lava spike here. There's a lava spike here. Maybe something broken, uh, broken up, and then it would be cool if you had it, like. Just hear me out here. <laughs> Uh, you got your human here holding on to this and you have the mouth going help help and he has his hand out help but maybe there's a leg here and then there's like a stone or something on his leg right something crushed and he can't move there's some lava flowing here and it's basically the dog doing psh, 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 to come and rescue right so you don't have to do crazy animation you can almost hide the face a little bit just having open mouth and arm will tell the story. Um, but it's a dog rescuing his guy. So, you know, like anybody that has a, is a pet owner is going to go, Oh, that's cute. Good dog. Blah, blah, blah. So you have some story to tell. And it's not just not just putting the dog in a different set. Like this, this works. I mean, this all works. Um, I kind of like the, do the lava thing. Why not? Um, then you can give him a bit, a bit more of a stern stern look like he could be here just a bit more and when he gets to here the face open up opens up because he's close to his master trying to save him um or maybe a spy dog spy dog. you could obviously um reminds me of bolt careful some bolt com uh, comparisons will happen um yeah i mean the park definitely works i think the thing would be cool the lava thing only because i'm thinking in terms of <clears throat> You know, put some t uh, bottom lights there, red, get some nice lighting on the white here, and the guy going, ah, and he got some smoke coming up, and everything, so ashes and amber going around, just from a VFX point of view and look design point of view, it could be really cool. But to me, what I like about your lava thing and, and why I said there's a human is because it gives the dog an, an objective, right? Because you want a character to do something, you want them. You want them to want something, right? Every character should have an objective. I want, what is my objective in that scene? What do I want? And by having the dog, I need to save my master. That's his objective. <clears throat> um, and then being, you know, having the human uh, in peril, it could be a guy or a woman, obviously, or a kid. Um, 
well, you wonder why a kid would be there. So maybe just you can have a woman with a helmet and like spelunking gear. She's you know she's kind of um, what's the word? She's kind of exploring this area, and then there was an accident, and, and you know, and maybe he he has a vest on and also a light. You know what I mean? Like they're both together, and you can kind of have the same similar costume, so it doesn't feel like whoa, where's this dog coming from? Like, no, they're in this together, and. You might argue why is she bringing the dog, but maybe exactly for that reason, it's it's the helper dog. Maybe to put like a red cross, uh, red cross vest on it. Maybe it's a helper dog and blah blah blah, whatever, right? But in that way, the the dog has an objective. There are stakes, you know. There is there is danger. There's uh, there is a conflict for the character there. I don't know. There's all kind of stuff. And I think I think you're right. Putting the the dog and all that stuff in the lava environment would enhance the story. Even if it's just a little thing, but I think that could be cool, and it would make it, you know, potentially less, less of an exercise. And then you can have a little bit of a pan on the camera, a little bit up, uh, tilting up, and a little pan to the left again, just following the dog a bit. And you can almost have a little bit of handheld. I can show you that if you want to. Um, but that could be cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm all for this. I'm all for this. And you can have some really simple smoke and amber. You know, like the thing is, you can do, even if it's just flat spheres where, where transparency is like at 10%, right? And you can just pretend that it's very graphic shapes of smoke and <clears throat> same thing where you have round orange spheres, flat, you know, 5% again, kind of floating around that will do the amber and then, and then more opaque ones in the back. I mean, I'm not saying you need to do effects and fluids and all kinds of stuff. You can be super simple, but it still tells the story. And then you can always render these on an alpha channel and then that way you can blur them, right? You can do a, uh, what's the word? Um, whatever, in After Effects of Premiere, you can just blur them and do a little compositing. Or you do a viewport 2.0, which you might have already in here. Give it a look. Um, and then do uh, depth of field, and you can just track the dog, and then the foreground will be automatically blurred. Same with the, with the background. Anyway, rambling, I think it would be a cool idea. I'm immediately uh, going places with, oh, how would I do this? This sounds like so much fun. Um, I usually have equal amount of fun dressing the scene versus, uh, or compared to animating. Versus animating. Anyway, rambling, that's enough for me. Thank you very much. All right, there's an email. You can sign up, you can start whenever you want, you can submit whenever you want, you get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right, thank you.